less two weeks before I think we discussed one verse from Sri Bhagavad Gita. And the verse goes like this Kim Tar Brahma Kim Adhyatam Kim Karma Purushottam Adibhutam Kim Proktam Adhivam Kim Mutsam. The first part is what is Brahma? And then we went to the details. Now, Brahma is the manifested creation. Whatever you see with your naked eye, that is Brahma. But then to sustain that visibility, manifested form of the creation, there has to be a force behind that. And that force is called the eternal divine force. So there are two types of creation embedded in the word Brahma, visible and invisible, Nirakar and Sakar. So then you said that it's okay, this information is okay. Now what is for me? Why I should know that? So we said that it is imperative to know this aspect that if you want to love Lord Krishna, you got to love the creation. He created that. And that is the most important spiritual message. So how to do that? So when we interact with people, first of all, the family, family, love the family. Because charity begins at home. If you don't love the family, you are missing the point. You will be angry man. You may be egocentric. The moment you step out from your home, you will be making people angry. You may be making people negative. You may be, your interaction will be uh, very minimum level of humanity. But once you understand that, that it is my responsibility to respect and adore the created creation of the Creator, then you got the message. Nowadays, there is a lot of uh, bad relationship in the home. Kids are not obeying you. There is a lot of misunderstanding between spouse and husband, brother and sister, father and mother, and so on and so forth. But at the same time, if you understand that, that until and unless my home is peaceful, you cannot share peace with the world. So you got to be peaceful. If you are peaceful, you will spread peace. If you are agitated, excited, negative, that you will spread also. Intentionally, unintentionally. We do these, those things. Look at the family fabric these days. They are stained with emotional cuts here and there. We don't respect. And I have been stressing more than enough in a lot of presentations that until and unless your relationship with your wife, which is the eternal permanent relationship, if you don't develop the divinity at that level, then you are missing the point. You cannot become peaceful until you have a peaceful relationship with your spouse and vice versa. It is applicable to both of them. So try your best. Try your best. Because all your assets are joint. All your possessions are joint. Your thinking is joint. You produce children jointly, you eat jointly, you sleep jointly, you are living in the same little house. It could be big house, but that is irrelevant. So try to get that message and practice that. Practice. Because Bhagavad Gita, there are 18 chapters. Each chapter is a yoga. Each chapter is yoga. And this itself, Abhyas Yoga, practice. It's a yoga. Yoga means it can unite you 
to the divine forces, you can tap those energies which are available to you at no cost. But since we don't know the technique, and we don't practice, and we don't have the awareness, and we are not faithful and sincere, and don't attack the priority that it should be done, along with other things. So my topmost priority should be to become a decent human being. And that will start at home. I am telling you, that will start at home. Until my home is peaceful, I am missing the point. And then under the same theory we discussed that Lord Krishna, in chapter 15, I shared with you with utmost humility that he said, Sarvasya jaham haridisanya vishto matta samrithi jnanam pohanat. Vedic sarva rahe meva vedin vedant kridde avidevacha. I am seated in the heart of everybody. Now think, think what he is saying. He is the creator. He is not an ordinary person talking to you. The God is talking to the man in the form of Arjuna. We are on Arjuna. But he is the God. When he is making a rule, I should not dare to disobey that. Otherwise I will pay the price. And that is what the whole dharma is. Dharma is the value system on which this creation has been created. Whosoever follows that value system is a dharmic person and who disobeys, neglect, abuse, misuse, they are adharmic. Does not matter how many times he goes to the temple, does not matter what he does on a daily basis. This is the basic rule, obey the rules. So if Lord Krishna is seated in the heart of everybody, what is the impact of that divine message? We are all divine. We are all temple. We are moving temple, walking temple, talking temple, eating temple. But do we treat ourselves as a temple? No. It's a problem. We have become more ritualistic. We think, profoundly we think, most of it, that doing arti and moving around deities, putting my head there in the lotus feet of Lord Rama, Krishna, Hanumanji, in the temple or in front of the, in my own home where I kept there, those few things is enough. It is not enough. Those are rituals. What is the corporate message these days? Think out of the box. Spirituality has been commanding that message many, many centuries before. Think out of the box. And out of the box thinking is that don't become ritualistic. You need a copy, a pen, or a calculator, or a laptop for doing your business. Whatever. If you are a student, you need that. If you are working in the office, you need that. But go beyond that. People are more successful career-wise who think beyond those things. I must understand where I work. What is the mission statement of that corporation? And I must align my production, my quality, according to the mission statement. And the mission statement of humanity is become a decent human being, first of all. So if we treat ourselves as a temple, moving temple, then you are divine. And the first litmus test coming out of this saying is, you will be devoid of jealousy, bad talk, leg pulling, negative talk. You will be promoting people if you profoundly believe that you are divine. You will practice divine habits. Because saying that is the spiritual presumption I shared with you last time. In legal parlance, there is a legal presumption that everybody is innocent till proven 
proven guilty, right? So, spiritual presumption is, according to this verse, 15 of chapter 15, that everybody is divine till he stopped doing divine things. So now, Bach stays with me. I have to analyze myself, not to you. That is why don't people say, don't judge, judge others. You have to judge yourself. So now judge yourself, analyze yourself. Are you divine or not divine? If somebody is promoted in the office and you are not, what is your state of mind? That will dictate, that will decide, are you spiritual or not spiritual? Are you happy or are you jealous? That will decide the state of mind. State of mind. How I think. Because <coughs> things that happen, everyday things that are happening around us. How we react, that is the core message of spirituality. In chapter 12, there is a verse. Yasmano dujate loko, lokano dujate chaya, harsha, marsh bhayo dvegai mukto ya sachimitya. Lord Krishna says, we always say, Oh God, give me this. Oh God, give me this. But do we think the other way around also? What Lord Krishna wants from us? It is easy to ask. We always pray. But what He wants? In this verse He says, develop your personality. So strong. Nobody should be allowed to disturb you. Your emotional setup should be so strong, petty things should not disturb you. And now I have to practice it. This is the spiritual awareness. Now I have to practice it at my own level. If I say something to you, Sir, you are outstanding. And now you are inflated. Ten minutes, if I criticize you, now you are diminished. So who is controlling? Me. Me. And the spiritual message of Bhagavad Gita is, no, you should be strong. You should be strong. People should not control you through your speech and through other means of communication. So my personality, that does not mean that I should become egomania, egocentric. I shared with you in the last presentation, there are two words. One is Shobhiman, one is Abhiman. So I must understand and digest the difference. One is self-respect, one is ego. Self-respect is that I am divine. No compromise, does not matter. If your conviction is, you profoundly believe that I don't have to eat meat, I'm just making up, just to make the point clear. That is individual choice. And somebody forces me to eat meat. No, it's not a question of ego. It's a question of self-respect. Because Lord Krishna is seated here, he does not like that, and this thing should not go inside. That should be the line of thinking. That should be the line of thinking. And who has to develop that? Me, you, individually. And that is why in Bhagavad Gita, practice, practice is a yoga, abhyas yoga. Abhyas ka matlab hai practice. But before I do practice, I must know what to practice. If you are practicing wrong thing, we will become wrong people. But if we are practicing divine things, information or oriented things, composed of awareness, then we become better people, better people. And in chapter 12, verse 12, 
again a reinforcement of this thinking. Shreyo hi jnanam abhyasa. Jnana, dhyanam vishishate, dhyana, karma, palatyaga, satyaga, chanti, nanantra. Better than practice is the knowledge. I must know what to practice. Otherwise, you, we will be ritualistic. All these rituals, we don't know the science behind that. Because people are doing, is a saint ne kaha diya, maatma ne kaha diya, is a or gifted soul ne kaha diya. Since he is doing, she is doing, so I am doing. I don't have the information. And that is the wrong practice. That is the wrong practice. People do, abhi shivratri thi, right? Lord Shiva, everybody worships Lord Shiva. Right? If you are a serious student of Lord Shiva, you are the follower of his teachings, then what is the core message? What is the core message coming out of Shivratri? Become fearless. He is holding the serpents like a garland. And if a snake comes here, we all will run away with full speed. Whether my knees are paining or not paining, I will be running in front of everybody. I am not a student of Lord Shiva. He is holding the serpent here. That is what fearlessness. That, that is what the spirituality is. So if I have been practicing and worshipping Lord Shiva, did I develop this trait of my personality? No, I am fearful. I am fearful. Lord Shiva's other attribute, austerity. What is wearing? What is wearing? Lagoti. The minimum. The minimum. How I can be a student of Lord Shiva if I don't practice austerity at my own level? It's a mental concept. Mental. First of all, I have, my thinking should be that way, then I will do. If it is not coming in my thinking, I will never do that. I will never, I will forget. You have seen so many saints, so many Mahatmas, come to our residences. You put on the TV this morning, there are bombardment of spiritual messages. Channel after channel after channel. Do we get it? No. Because there is no space. Junk is there. It's a limited space. Like a computer. You have to delete. Delete the garbage. Until you delete, there is no space. Does not matter what I am talking. It will never go inside. Five minutes it will stay, but at the end of the day, 99% is gone. Only 1% if somebody is lucky. So, if we think that way, it is the human mind which created computers, not the vice versa. Whatever is applicable to computer, it is applicable to the mind. Use proper password. Open the right windows where the information is. Google those things in your mind which are useful, not the junk. Everybody has the computer these days. How much abuse is going on? Can you believe that? When people are caught, they are holding very high positions. Recently they called a very, I, I will not mention his name, a very high positioned person. He was re, uh, dealing with the kids at counselor, the highest counselor, managing 20 districts. When he was caught, it was not pornography or on his computer because he is misusing the information. But people 
if uh, in NASA, who were exploring the space, the star, the galaxy, nebula, trillions of Milky Way, they are also using the computer. But their research is qualitative, productive. The same principle is applicable how to use and cultivate our minds. Our minds. And it is, it is me. I use my password. Nobody has anybody's password. I'm talking of the mind. No, just theoretically think. Only lighter note. We are sitting here, right? Physically we are here. Mentally I don't know. Are you listening to me or not? You may be thinking many other things. That when Mr. Kapoor goes, I have to pick up the kid, I have to get the car washed, oil seal, then I have to pick up my wife. You may be thinking now. Right now. Right now. So my point is to focus the mind. Whose responsibility is individual? I cannot do anything for you. No saint, no Mahatma can do. They can bring the awareness. They can give you the information. But you have to use the passport and open the right window where the information is there. So this is how spirituality works. So we were talking about the divinity. If I profoundly believe I am a divine person, so I should be devoid of jealousy, bad talk, pulling legs, people. Promote, become divine. When others are, this is this is another litmus test. Apply, apply on. Let us apply on all of us. If somebody is happy, it could be a friend, it could be a relative, brother, sister, mother, wife, anybody and everybody. If they are happy, are you happy deep down? We say through speech, we acknowledge that I am very happy. But if you are stuck and they are promoted, Know what you think. Until and unless I have practiced this art on a daily basis, small thing, my reaction will be different. I may, through speech, acknowledge that I am very happy with your progress. But deep down, there is a big hole. How come? How come? So, the idea of Bhagavad Gita class is the awareness. Awareness. Bring the positive awareness and change yourself. When you change, things change. So, this was the part of Brahma. Respect, adore the visible world. Because Lord Krishna says, Aksharam Brahma. Jo aam se nikhai deta hai, wo Brahma hai, wo creation hai. And is, there is a double meaning. Akshar, jiska nash nahi hota. That is Nirakar. Sakar ka nash hota hai. What is visible, it is changing. <laughs> what is visible, it is subject to change. But what is invisible, that energy is permanent. And that is Lord Krishna. That is Lord Brahma. That is Lord Hanuman. That is Lord Rama. That is Lord Shiva. Any name does not matter. I must understand the concept. So, this was the first part. Second part, Kim Tad Brahma, Kim Adhyatam. What is Adhyatam? It is a Sanskrit word. Adhyatam. Adhyatam means self-study. Self-realization. And that is as important information like, you want to go to Iceland, let us say. I'm just making up. 
you can explore on the globe. Like it is here. Then you can Google it, right? And get the whole information about that country, little country, small country. And now when you will travel, you know, you will not be alien. You will enjoy more. You will have more information than the local guide who will be telling you things. You will ask more questions to the local guide based upon the information, your research, your homework. Life is that. Self-study, self-realization, what it is? What it is? What do you think? I'm just asking. What is self-realization? Self-realization is, it is addressing three basic questions. Who am I? This is, these thoughts are coming out of Upanishad thoughts. This is you, Bhagavad Gita, we say that this is the juice of Vedas, it is the juice of Puranas, it is the juice of Upanishadas, it is the juice of both the epics. This is what Bhagavad Gita is. So, Bhagavad Gita says these three questions, who am I? What is my mission on this planet? And where I will go? These are three questions. And when we come here from India, right? We all came at a different time. We filled up the visa application. When the visa was granted, right? When you got a green card. They were asking us your local information, where you will stay. Right? Yes. Abibi, now when you travel, there is a form you have to write where you will stay. Right? Because that information is very important. In case you are lost, they know that you gave this information. But when this information is applied to us, we are not serious. So, if I think we made um, two years back pre presentation of this aspect, but I am just refreshing it, that who am I if I ask you what could be the best answer? It's a perception, like which perceptions, what kind of perceptions I have based on that I will answer in that particular time frame. What could be the best answer? Who am I? Who are you? I am just asking who are you. Just plain question, not big thing, not philosophical. Who are you? First of all, it is your name. Yeah, my name, your name. So and, and so, name, right? Yes. And, and then yes, you will yes, say, yes, sir, your title, your post, maybe your parents, right? right? Parent or your residence, something like that. Now analyze it. It is a guesswork. I ask who are you? And you are giving the guesswork. My name is that. Who gave you the name? Your parents. And who are your parents? They don't know who you are. You just came. We just came through our parents. We don't know. And they don't know. If, if I ask my parents, tell me from where I came. <laughs> no answer. No answer. As if you ask me, we, everybody has kids. Your kids are your kids. They came through you. They have their own chips. They have their own program. If you go to the nursery, if there are 20 kids, newborn, everybody is newborn, right? They are so beautiful, tender, smiling. Some may be crying, but the idea is as they grow, when the compatibility of the chip which they brought 
it starts functioning. When they get the compatibility, why brothers are different? Under the same roof, same parents, same mother, father. How come? So that means the information which we have, it is wrong information. I don't, actually I don't know who am I. That is the right answer. I don't know. Spiritually, if you are advanced in spiritual pursuits of your life, you may say I am the integral part of the almighty creation. Mamai Vansho, Jeeva Loke, Jeeva Bhuta Sanatana. Mana Shashtani Indriyani, Prakriti Stani Kaishati. Mamai Vansho, Jeeva Loke, I am the integral part of this divine existence. That is the definition. Who am I? In small world, better understanding, plain English, we say we are the Atma. We are the spirit. We are the soul. And then we say soul never dies. It is the body which dies. Right? So that means we understand the distinction. So we never die. That is my message of sharing with all of you. And the biggest fear on this planet is the fear of death. And now with this information you know you never die. How much clear it could be? But all our way of life, the way we live, the way we think, the way we talk, walk, eat, we profoundly believe one day I will die. And that is the biggest fear, I tell you. Biggest fear is the research-oriented statement I am sharing with you. I am not making it. And Bhagavad Gita's wisdom is also supporting this thousands and thousands of years before that you never die, it is the body which dies. This is called self-awareness. So now, if I practice this at my own level, when I get up in the morning, and remind myself, I will never die. How many nursing homes, they are the regular houses. Have you been to a nursing home? One time, somebody called and they wanted a presentation on Bhagavad Gita. And they were all Americans. You know? And I went, I accepted the email, the email came, I accepted it. I said, let's, let's try. Message is same, you know. And I was dumbfounded. It was a big hall, very big hall. And the presentation time was 12 o'clock. So I was there by 11.30. Because it was a new place. And everybody was on the wheelchair. And there was a helper, they were moving the wheelchairs of each individual, and in time there were 500 wheelchairs, occupants, the patients, the residents, and their helpers, so thousand people. I had never seen such humongous suffering in front of your eyes, and they were like that. They had no idea what I would say, what I would talk, and everybody was like that. Looking at such a huge suffering right in front of you, you say, wow, wow, how lucky we are. But the idea is, if all those people, I made this awareness to them, start thinking that you are okay. It is the frail, frailty of your body. This will go. 
प्योर होते शिफ्ट द थिंकिंग शिफ्ट द थिंकिंग यू आर द इंटेग्रल पार्ट ऑफ जीसस जीसस नेवर डाई यू नेवर डाई सो द आइडिया इज दिस अवेयरनेस दैट आई विल नेवर डाई इट इज अ फियरलेस स्टेटमेंट it is the statement coming out of lord shiva he represents death all cemeteries in india i am talking shamshan ghat right everybody has visited which temple is there yam devta not lord krishna yam not brahma ji not hanuman ji so he is the lord of death and he is telling us all by putting 20 serpents around his neck damn it become fearless the other name of serpent is death i gave you the example if you bring one snake and does not matter how many people are devotee of lord shiva <laughs> they will be first one to run away because of the death so first of all let us remind ourselves it's a very eternal strong permanent message we never die because we are atma we are spirit we will get another option i will get another body another car this leaves me over i will get another leaves but i have to think that way it is easy to say but it is hard to practice but once you practice it on a daily basis you will be released you will be levitated you will be floating around people who are scared of water people who who have no knowledge how to swim you bring them to the water as they are scared to death but people who understand and who have taken enough lessons of swimming and perfected this swimming at their own level water is their friend water embraces them bring them up play around cuddling with the water shouting laughing talking in the water otherwise it is a death the person who does not know how to swim you bring him next to the pool or from the diving at the edge of the diving board he is gone he is scared the whole being of his existence is scared that he will die water will not l- let him come up but if you know swimming you dive you don't do anything everybody knows swimming everybody knows swimming what do you do when you jump from the diving board i go boom do i do anything i come up this is how the life is when you are fearless water brings you up when you are fearful the same guy will never come up he will be gasping around he, he is struggling just to get little air in his system so this information i am sharing with you that we are we will never die remember this we will never die now adjust your life become fearless when you are fearless you are fearless at the border so we are so protect our territories our borders if they are fearless they are the winners if they are fearful they are supposed to die because it's not a child play there 
Everybody has a gun. Everybody has a machine gun. Everybody has other things. So fearlessness advances you in life. So under the concept, who am I? I am the integral part of the Almighty Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna never dies, I never die. My other name is Soul. My other name is Atma. My other name is Spirit. So that is what I am. I am not the body. Chapter 2, Lord Krishna says, Nainam Chindanti Shastra. I am not the body. I am living in the body. And you are living in the body. You are not the body. But most of our, almost all of our resources are spent on the body. And this Bhagavad Gita class, how many people are sitting? This is, this is exactly what I mean. Bring Lata Mangeshkar here, or Shahrukh Khan. <laughs> and see the tamasha, like the play of the body. Everybody thinks we are the body. Everybody thinks we are the body. But if you are a serious student, you will also enjoy. But you will enjoy enjoyment will be qualitative because it is information based. It is information based. So this awareness, under self-realization, who am I? I am the integral part of Almighty Lord Krishna. He never dies, I never die. He is forever, I am forever. Second part, what is my mission? Because if you study, we all work very hard. Right? Right from the day we are born, till the day, final departure. We work very hard. First of all, as a son or a daughter, lot of discipline, we go to schools, teachers, right, companions, and then we go to high school, then we go to college, and it's a very arduous, very difficult process. We are developing our traits, our personalities, and then, luckily, after getting many certifications and accomplishments, we get a job. Now the real world starts. That was another world. Once you get a job, it is a totally different, different panoramic view. Corporate world, manager after manager, supervisor after supervisor. Every week you are evaluated. Every week you are given assessments, risk analysis. Everything opened up. Now you are trying to adjust that way. And then again you work very hard. And now you get citations, awards, promotions. One day you are the senior most. And now what happens? <laughs> The time is also going with you. That curve is also going with you. And one day come, they say, Sir, your age is there now. Get out from here. Either due to health reason, or due to age restrictions, or other concern. Voluntarily or involuntarily, you retire. Am I right? It happened. If it did not happen to you, it will happen. It happened to me. Whatever I explained to you, I have gone through that. I was a senior most in the U.S. Treasury Department. I am a attorney by profession. I progressed leaps and bounds. But then I didn't wait what I did because spirituality was the background. One day, this is personal information, just to infuse you, that when you, your thinking is different, you do certain different things. I was sitting. It was a nice, fine day, like any other day. I was sitting at my desk. 
and I was forced to go to Houston, where there, there was a lot of traveling agents to travel. It was a federal job. And I called my wife, 10 o'clock. Will you mind if I retire? And it was a bomb cell because I brought my lunch with me, you know, and uh, everything was okay. But a very strong thought came to my mind. How long? How long? Let me pay back to the society. Society gave me so much, let me pay back. As long as I'm healthy. So she said, no. Go ahead. And Helen, you believe it or not, I submitted, I went to my superior and I told them I want to retire. He said, what happened? Said, no, I just want to retire. He said, but you know your uh, assignment, you were flying to Houston uh, two days after this. I said, I know that, but this is my decision. He said, are you retiring or are you resigning? I said, no, I am retiring. <laughs> I'm giving you a notice of 30 days. I'm not getting up right now. So the idea of sharing this personal information was that sooner or later, we all have to do that. And then what? Now think of the final thing. Everything said and done. And the time has come. And you get the signal. People who die, or who was at the worst of death, they get enough signals that the time has come. Now, now, right in front of you, all our possessions, all our certifications, all our cars, houses, wife, children, best friend, best first enemies, you leave behind. Like the curtain is going to fall, and you have to use the exit where nobody goes. Think theoretically, how much mental agony, if still I am aware, if I didn't lose the awareness, how much pain will be there? If you lose today, if you are going for shopping, in Macy's store you lose thousand dollar cash, somehow. How many days will you will not sleep? That day definitely you will not sleep when it happens. But chances are it may continue a couple of more days. Damn it, where, where it went? You will visit Macy's store many times. You will upside your house, your pants, your other pockets just to find thousand dollars. But when everything goes and you are naked, Hands are naked, body is naked, and this is the writing of the war. It will happen to everybody. Why don't I adjust my thinking? Then I should know now what is my mission. Because these things will go. It does not it look, it's a wastage of time. I accumulated so many assets, and now I'm leaving. I deposited every month religiously for 30 years in my saving account. And I thought it's a huge balance, let us say $10 million. And when I went to the bank to withdraw, they said, you don't have the account. Now how much shock you will have. And it happens to all of us because we leave everything. But it is not a pessimistic thought. It is a positive thought. Thought based on the energy. Okay, think the right way. Then it will not hurt you. Then it will not hurt you. So this whole concept comes under the preview of what is my mission? And Bhagavad Gita is the guide. I should not guess. I should not ask people. What do you think? What do you think? Bhagavad Gita. Lord is telling you that these things will go with you. Chapter 15 and verse 8 
it gives you the awareness what will go in. Like when the wind blows, have you seen that these uh, tulip fields in Europe? At least you have seen on the internet. People have seen those pictures, right? So beautiful. Have you seen the Valley of Roses? So Valley of Roses, I'm just sharing with you the subtle awareness. When you are standing 10 miles away, and the wind is blowing from the Valley of Roses, you are enchanted. You didn't see the flowers. You didn't see the roses. You just saw the essence of goodness, fragrance, liveliness. And you thought, there must be in the surrounding roses somewhere, because this fragrance is so strong. This is our mission. When we leave, that leave behind the fragrance of your good deeds based on selflessness. Selflessness. Because otherwise, the same scenario in the valley, there are 20 dead bodies and the wind is blowing. You get bad smell. Bad smell. So treat your existence to create the fragrance of your deeds based upon right karma, based upon dharma. So that is the essence of our existence, the mission to create positive fullness. Live and let live. Promote people. Hold their hands. Pull them up. Don't pull their legs. Do small things on a daily basis. You are commuting. Give space. Give the right of way. Let him think you are an idiot. So who cares? Stop. Let them go. Develop these traits. These are free, cost effective, time management. And you are the benefits. Nobody will notice, but you will, people will wait for you. Wow, look at this. He has the right of way, but he let me go. So these small things, when we do, we are creating the valley of roses. And when the wind of death will come across, you will see, wow, somebody has left. That is the mission. That is the mission. And uh, time have? Can I? Can I? Yeah. Or we Until those kids come here, yeah, we can. I don't know. Yeah. Keep going. Oh. Yeah, keep going. Yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Keep going. Until you let me. Know. Yeah, until those kids come, uh, his class. Okay. Class. Your, your you class. can continue. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So. Mission, this is the mission. My mission on this planet, if somebody asks you, your mission. Mission is to create the goodness. Mission is to create the quality. Mission is to make people positive. Mission is to uplift your relatives. Mission is to create peace in your home. Mission is to become a Catholic agent, in your presence, things should happen. When you are sitting, you will create a magnetic field of positivity. Whosoever will come within that field, they will be magnetized. Change people. But first of all, change yourself. Change yourself. And it is very easy, I tell you. It is easy. And it should be practiced on a daily basis, small things. Small things. If in the elevator, there is only one more space to go in, it is full. 
and two people are standing outside. Let the other go. But now we do the other way. Think, just practice it. <laughs> it, is, it is free. But once you start doing on a daily basis these small things, the accumulated effect of these small noble deeds will make, bring a lot of nobility in the innermost layer of your personality and you will start shining. You will start shining. So, this is the mission. To become positive and make people positive. Become qualitative, make people qualitative. Share your knowledge, share your wealth, share your health. Give back to the society as much as you can. Respect others. But first of all, you have to respect yourself. Because Lord Krishna is seated in your heart. Don't disrespect yourself. Don't abuse this body. Don't misuse this body. Judiciously use this body. It is a vehicle of liberation. This human body is it is a benevolence of the creation. This is the apex point of creation, this human body. Think that way and do exactly the same way that this is the best, anything coming out of it should be the best. That is the divine message. That is what Srimad Bhagavad Gita is. And now the third part is where I will go. Where I will go? And that is a big question. Where I will go? Now here comes in, where I will go, there are two theories advocated by Srimad Bhagavad Gita. One is the theory of reincarnation. And one, the theory of karma. Karma. Those two theories are complementary, supplementary to each other. And I must understand that. That is why I say, people say, you are the master of your destiny. According to the information coming out of the theory of law of karma. Today's action by the end of the day is your destiny. An accumulated effect, like when you close the books at the end of the year, liabilities, assets, you create the balance sheet and then you know what are, what are the balances which have to be carried over. According to bookkeeping, other things are closed. Other things are closed. Lene Deni ka jo hai, agar aapka hundred dollar tha aur aapne during the year hundred dollar mujhe de diya hai, your account is closed. But if fifty is still there, it is a carried over. Those who will do the bookkeeping, your balance will be fifty dollars. Right? Karmic theory is exactly like that. It is the bookkeeping. Bookkeeping. Of my own actions. Who is the bookkeeper? You. Me. We write books. Who, who does the internal audit? There has to be internal audit. Lord Krishna. He does the internal audit. Look at the Chitra book. Who secretly is making your video of your thoughts. Actions can be seen by others. But what you think, it is very hard to perceive what you think. But he knows. So he is creating a video of all my actions, emotions, whatever they are. And that is the internal audit. That will override my bookkeeping. Because I could be 
selfish. I may ignore. So he will do the adjusting entries. He, 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 he is a marvelous bookkeeper. So think that way under this that where I will go. I am the master. I can direct where I should go. But doing that, I must understand the karmic philosophy of Srimad Bhagavad Gita. The intent and motive of your action decides the quality of your action. आप सोचते क्या हो जब कोई काम करते हो मोटिव क्या है आपका दैट विल डिसाइड इफ आई एम स्टैंडिंग इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू एंड आई एम मेकिंग ए प्रेजेंटेशन ऑन सिर्फ भगवत गीता नाउ वी नो ईच अदर बिकॉज वी हैव बिन डूइंग दिस आई नो ऑल दी फेसेस इफ डीप डाउन अगेन दिस इज वेरी प्राइवेट पर्सनल emotion i am sharing with you if deep down i am thinking that i am looking for popularity i am looking for people should know me i am doing a disservice but if i understand that changing people selflessly will change me have you been to this perfume shops people who sell perfume for 20 years their body starts smelling if they leave their profession their bodies you shake hand with them there will be aroma this is what happens if you do selflessly selflessly without the expectation of any award distinction just do it that this is the wisdom of bhagavad gita this is lord krishna i will be very close to lord krishna if i send his message share his message in bhagavad gita there is a verse ya imam parmam guhyam mad bhaktesh vidhasyati bhaktim vai pram kritva mame veshate sanshay jo mere is eternal message ko shraddha se with profound conviction मेरे भक्तों में शेयर करेगा भक्तों में वो ऐसा व्यक्ति मुझे बहुत प्रिय है वेरी नियर एंड डियर सो भक्त का मतलब ही होता है जो जुड़ा हुआ है जो विभक्त नहीं है टू ब्रिंग दैट स्टेट ऑफ फाइन ट्यून थिंकिंग I must get the assistance of Sri Mad Bhagavad Gita. Otherwise, it will not happen. It won't happen. But who so ever has done this in the context of India? There are brilliant, brilliant minds centuries ago, and still there are. No body statement is authenticated, certified. without the prerogative of bhagavad gita that input has to be there because when bhagavad gita came into existence there were no religion all this christianity and judaism and other things and other things they came later on everything and all the things initiated in shri mad bhagavad gita they have the universal appeal whatever your faith is you got to go through the litmus test of universality jis cheez mein aap vishwas karte ho wo universal hai ki nahi hai that will decide that will decide i am on the right path otherwise those are all man made things भगवद गीता इज नॉट मैन मेड इज भगवत भगवान के मुंह से निकली हुई परम वाक्य जो है दिस नो इंटरमीडिएटली सो दिस थर्ड पार्ट वी आर ट्राइंग टू एक्सप्लोर दैट 
where we will go. After understanding that who am I, we discussed what is my mission, and now we are close to the concept of where I will go. And I shared with you, there are two theories. One is the karmic philosophy, which I am the master. Because I am the master of my destiny. By using the karmic philosophy at its optimum level, I must know the technique. Otherwise, my quality of karma will be inferior. But if I'm the master, whatever my intent and motive will decide the mastery of my action. I don't think I'm going to do something. Good or bad, it doesn't matter. I think what's the motive and the intent. That will seal the judgment of that action. So I think uh, we will continue, uh, we will build on that karmic philosophy and then is the law of karma. Next, kim tad brahma, kim adhyatam, self-study, self-realization. Kim karma, then adibhut, adidev. So there are three still components left out of this uh, particular verse. We will share again with the um, blessings of Lord Krishna. Let us all stay healthy. Thank you. Thank you.